So, you've set up your PS Move full body tracking and have been using it for a while now, but you've noticed there are some things about your tracking that are a little bit off. It could be jitter, wonkiness when you rotate, or even the controllers themselves twisting about even though you're only moving them in a straight line. If any of the above sounds familiar to you, this video is for you. From the stupid simple tweaks and tips to the I hope you won't be needing that again modifications, today I'll be going over a few different ways you can improve your PS Move tracking quality. So let's get straight into the easiest stuff you can do right away. The first trick to improving your tracking quality is lighting. The simplest thing you can do is make your play space as dark as possible. This makes the tracking LEDs of your controllers stand out more against the background and helps a lot with tracking consistency and minimizing jitter. Ideally, you'd want your lights off, curtains closed, and your room in complete darkness. But this won't be 100% possible for you Questies and Rift S users out there, since your headsets need a little bit of light to be able to see the room it's in and track. In that situation, just dim the lights as much as possible and that will help a lot. The next thing you can do is try to keep the lighting conditions in your room as consistent as possible and then calibrate the cameras to those conditions. The idea behind this is to make your tracking environment as consistent as possible and avoid wild swings in brightness caused by things like daylight shining through a window or even just switching on your light. The cameras will always expect whatever conditions they were subject to when you calibrated them. And when that changes, so will the quality of your tracking. Slight differences like this can affect how your camera filters out the tracking LED of your controllers, so keeping this under control can help a lot. The easiest way you can do this is closing your curtains and turning on your light if you need to, even if it's in the day. And once you've settled on your lighting, just recalibrate the cameras to your controllers' colours, and then recalibrate the pose of your cameras in the room with the A4 pattern as well. This will ensure that your cameras are calibrated to their new lighting conditions. Now, each time you play, all you have to do is just try to reproduce the lighting conditions as best as you can. This should remove a lot of the variables that might make your tracking a bit inconsistent, and that will go a long way. That's it for the quick and dirty tricks to improving your tracking quality. Now, we're going to move on to trying to squish some tracking weirdnesses. You may have noticed some strange things like your feet and hips rotating differently to your head, despite your best efforts to calibrate them properly in K2VR, or you may have noticed while doing so that your feet controllers may be significantly above or below the floor when putting your hip tracker at the proper height. Most of this will have to do with how your play space has been calibrated with the A4 piece of paper. Issues with this could result in some of your controllers moving differently to others despite being under the same conditions, or the size of your play space being miscalculated, making it much larger or smaller than it actually is. This all can make it significantly more difficult to properly calibrate everything in K2VR, resulting in many different strange issues like the ones I just outlined. You can try to fix the play space scaling issue with OpenVR Space Calibrator, but you'll struggle to find any success calibrating it with that because of the tracking latency of the controllers and the magnetometer interference from your regular VR controllers while doing so. The best way to solve the play space scaling issue in my experience is to experiment with the size of the pattern you place your controllers down in when calibrating. Changing the size of this can trick the PS Move into thinking the play space is much smaller or larger than it actually is, and this can allow you to fine tune the scale of your PS Move play space to be exactly how you like it. The key to it is just keeping the center point in the same place, or just moving the outer points closer or further away from it. A larger square makes for a smaller PS Move play space because the service thinks the cameras are closer to the pattern. And conversely, a smaller square makes for a larger PS Move play space because it thinks the cameras are further away. It's a very janky solution of course, but once you figure out what size pattern works for you, you should just be able to go on calibrating your play space like usual. Moving on to reducing tracking latency now, in my original tutorial I've already mentioned using Task Manager to force reset the PS Move service admin if the tracking has some oddly high latency. This should work after a few tries, but if it doesn't and your tracking quality is still rough and latent, check how much CPU usage the PS Move service is taking while using it in VR. Chances are it's quite a decent bit because it has to directly process four camera streams worth of data to track each of the controllers, and on weaker CPUs, the performance hit can be quite apparent. If you do have a weaker CPU and it's struggling to run the PS Move service alongside all of your other programs, there is a way you can dial back the amount of data it needs to crunch through. In the PS Move config tool, go into Calibrate Controller Tracking Colors under the Tracker Settings tab, and just decrease each of the cameras' frame rate by a bit. This should plain and simple reduce the amount of raw data the cameras are throwing at your CPU, leaving it more room to breathe and run other stuff like your actual games. Just mess about with this until you find a balance between tracking quality and overall performance, and you should be golden. My final recommendation then, for the simpler things you can also do right now, is to try out using a renewed fork of the PS Move service called the PS Move Service EX. 
From what I know, it's basically an upkept version of the PS Move service, which originally stopped being supported quite a while ago. It's got a lot of bug fixes like being able to natively pair controllers inside of it, and experimental features like being able to use your own webcams instead of PSI cameras. I have no personal experience with this version, but it should be the exact same as the regular PS Move service, but just much less of a pain to deal with. So my regular tutorial for full body tracking with the PS Move service should still work just fine with it, just with a lot less of the workarounds being needed. And with that, I hope you found any one of these tips and mods helpful, and consider leaving a like and a comment if you did. I have plenty of other videos related to PS Move full body tracking, including completely overhauling a hip controller to make it easier to use in VR. And while you're at it, check out some of my other content as well. There's a lot more to come, including my custom haptic vest project which I'm just waiting on a few parts to arrive so I can complete it, and a slime VR full body tracking comparison to the PS Move service. Stay tuned for that, because I know a lot of you have been asking for it. Though I think I've said enough here, thanks for watching. My name's Kai, and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.